What's up, future millionaires? Mike the Investor, and from the thumbnail and title, you now know that this will be my last stash update. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right, investors, welcome back to the channel. Now, before we pull up the Stash app, I'm gonna briefly share with you a few reasons on why this will be my last Stash update and what I plan to do with the portfolio. So the first reason, and this is not in any particular order, but the first reason is I am thinking about, you know, changing the portfolio into more of a speculative growth portfolio. And what I mean by that is investing into some more riskier positions because I do want to kind of get into uh, some of the uh, EV industry uh, and invest in some of those more speculative positions because I do see a lot of growth in those positions as well as the cannabis industry as well. And Stash does not actually have some of those positions that I want to get into. Uh, the other reason will be is because Stash does charge a $1 fee. It's not a huge deal. Uh, that's why I've been using the platform for so long. But if I'm going to switch uh, my portfolio to, you know, invest in other uh, stocks that Stash does not offer, having a free investment platform is a nice benefit as well. And then the last thing will be is the two investing platforms that I'm thinking about using will be M1 Finance and SoFi Investing. Now, they're both very popular. Now, M1 Finance may be probably a little bit more popular than SoFi Investing, but I'm going to share with you why I'm looking at these two uh, investing platforms in particular. Now, both platforms are free. They do not have any fee to use the platform. And SoFi Investing, not only do they offer the speculative positions that I would like to get into, but they also offer cryptocurrency investing. And I really like that. Now, SoFi Investing is still the custodial of the cryptocurrency digital assets, but it gives you the ability to still invest in a small amount of cryptocurrencies. And if you know me by now, I'm a huge investor and huge believer in the cryptocurrency space. So I really like that. And Stash does not offer uh, the ability to invest in cryptocurrency and M1 Finance doesn't offer that as well. Now, M1 Finance, on the other hand, I love the way they uh, have their algorithm for uh, your portfolio, the Pi uh, system that they have. It makes it really easy to grow a portfolio and really set it and forget it. It's also free and they also have uh, those different speculative positions that you can invest in as well. So basically, you know, SoFi and M1 Finance, they have more of a range of riskier positions to invest in compared to Stash. Stash is mainly geared towards more for completely beginner investors and that's why they don't offer some of those more speculative positions like spec stocks more penny stocks and things like that now you can find very few penny stocks on the platform but they are going to be i guess in some ways a little bit more safer than some of your super super risky stocks so hopefully that makes sense and also i'm gonna have a question of the week for you at the end of the video. So be sure to watch this to the end because I definitely wanna hear your thoughts and what you would do in this situation. So let's go ahead and pull up the Stash app and we can check out my Stash portfolio. So now we are on the Stash app and you can see my portfolio value is $1,000. $509.70. The first three days, you know, of the week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, were complete red days in the market. You know, things are getting closer to election day as well, which will be Tuesday, this upcoming Tuesday. So things are getting a little shaky in the market. And I think this is kind of a per se of a bad time, but also a good time to kind of change lanes on what I want to do with this portfolio. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And I only have, you know, five positions in this portfolio, so I don't have a lot of holdings. So the very first position is going to be Apple. And as you can see here, um, I'm currently down on Apple at 8.91%. And the current value is $428.13. And I'm currently down $41.87. Now my average price is $126.60. And I have 3.71 shares 
in Apple. Now, if we go over to the overview, you'll be able to see uh, the last price of Apple is $115.32. And you can see Apple had a pretty nice rally uh, today back in the market. Pretty much the entire stock market was green. You can see they were up 3.71% on today, which was pretty good. So after looking at Apple, we move down to corporate cannabis here. This is the MJ ETF, also known as Alternative Harvest. Now, as we go into the position, you can see my value is $252.64. I'm currently down 10.08%, and that is $28.31. My average price is $12.15, and I currently have 23.11 shares in this position. Now, if we go over to the overview, we can see their last price is $10.93, and they were up 1.39%. Now, after looking at corporate cannabis, we're going to go to Tencent Holdings, and they've also been rallying a lot. I really like this company here. They are very diverse, and they have a lot of power in their industries as well. So as we look at Tencent Holdings here, you can see the value, $318.39. I'm currently up at 16.69%, and I'm currently up at $45.54. Now, my average price is $67.30, and I'm not currently have just a little over four shares. Now, if we go to the overview, you can see the last price of Tencent Holdings is $78.53, and they were up 3.40%, which is not bad at all. After Tencent Holdings, we're looking at Berkshire Hathaway Class B. You can see my value here, $220.38. I'm currently up 12.13%. That is $23.84. Now, my average price, $179.69, and I have a total number of shares of 1.09. Now, if we go to the overview, we can see Berkshire Hathaway Class B last price $201.49 and they were up just 0.39%. Now the last position in the portfolio will be Facebook and this is the largest position that I'm up on uh, far as profit. So if we go to Facebook here, so if we look at my Facebook position, you can see my value is $290.15. I'm currently up at 50.91%, which is not bad at all. And that is $97.89. Now my average price, $186.09. And I just have 1.03 shares in Facebook. Now if we go to the overview, we can see Facebook's last price, $280.83. We can see Facebook is approaching that $300 range, but with the market being a little shaky right now, I don't know if it's going to reach that uh, mark at this apparent time. So as you can see, they were up 4.92% just on the day, so almost 5%, which is really good. So those are all five positions here in my stash portfolio, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway, Tencent Holdings, corporate cannabis, and Apple. This is just a complete growth portfolio, but I will change this up into being more of a speculative growth portfolio because I do want to invest in some more speculative positions as I was mentioning earlier in the video. All right, investors, so question for the day. What should I do with this portfolio? Number one, should I cash out this portfolio and slowly start to implement the capital from this portfolio into my dividend portfolio? Or should I go ahead and switch this portfolio to the other uh, one or two platforms that I mentioned, M1 Finance or SoFi Investing, and make this more of a speculative growth portfolio? Let me know down in the comment section. I am very, very curious on what you all would do as investors in this position. So definitely drop some down in the comment section. You know, I'm very curious. Also, if you are still watching this video, I really appreciate it. I really hope you gain maybe some value from this video, or at least I entertained you and you appreciated the transparency in this video. So be sure to go ahead and smash that like button as well. And if you like content like this, also click that subscribe button as well. I'm Mike the Investor. Remember to stay inspired, stay motivated, always invest in yourself, and I'm out.